The Savannah Bananas have taken the sports world by storm. Unconventional play, in-game entertainment, new rules, and plenty of spin-offs on the classic game of baseball. Wildly popular and bringing in the dollars. The Savannah Bananas decide to pull another trick out of their hat and open up a university right here in Savannah, Georgia. They felt like their new twist on baseball was so successful that they too could bring a fresh new twist to education and football. The goal is simple, to be the best campus in America. Everyone can now follow their dream and become a Savannah Banana. How However, to be number one, they're gonna have to build a football team and win a national championship. I mean, come on, everyone knows the college experience is more enjoyable when athletics are on top of the world. Hence, the Savannah Banana football team was born. With Sir Sponge at the helm, expect some trickery and unconventional football for the Bananas. Running the veer and shoot on offense and then the 3-2-6 defense, that's some wacky stuff. The brand name alone attracted some of the best transfers in the nation in only year one. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of rebuilding to do, but six foot eight Trey Split is going to be receiving the ball from 97 speed quarterback D. Peely. These two will make for an excellent year one tandem. If you need to put the ball in anyone else's hands, that's where we run into some trouble. Not sure how long five foot AJ James will be able to hold up. Defense is okay too. I'll be looking for contribution from guys like Brock Bread. The inaugural season of the Savannah Banana Rebuild looks a little like this. Of course, it's a Georgia heavy schedule. Georgia Tech in the first one. On the road against the Dogs in week four before taking Georgia Southern at the Banana Split Stadium. Rest of the season is made up of Sun Belt opponents as we'll look to run the conference in just year one. 75 overall, 74 offense, 77 defense, definitely some room to grow as we'll have our hands full in the Sun Belt and then of course as we try to make the ascent towards the national championship. First team all conference punter and then give it up for second team Trey Split. I'm looking forward to seeing him in action. But before we get to action, we're going to have to start convincing high school prospects to put Savannah, Georgia on the map. As you can see, there were a few three stars, but really a lot of two stars. And to be honest, I expected a better batch of bananas in our first season. Looks like the rebuild is gonna be a challenging one. With Peely, we only have two years max, so I might as well throw my name in the hat for Toby Coker, the best quarterback in the nation. Hey, how you doing? Here's a scholarship. If you all are not giving out scholarships by now in the preseason, you're wasting your time. You need to give these scholarships out so you can have a boost as soon as week one rolls around. Jermaine Pinckney is a bust four star, but 97 speed, 96 acceleration with a couple abilities. That's tempting enough. David Poe, on the other hand, is a four-star gem and he's a must target. Our first weekly advanced summary has me a little worried. Split means Culliver, some of our best players already thinking about transferring. I guess Savannah Banana culture takes time to build up in the football space. Locked out already from a few prospects, it's time to narrow the board down and solidify on the bananas we wanna bring in first. Too early to tell on the big prospects that we're targeting, they all have offers in our head, but you never know, we can make a later run, so let's hold on for at least a week or two. For now, let's focus on Georgia Tech and let me introduce you to the uniform options. We got the home, the yellows, then on the road, we don our alternate purple collar. And then just because I felt like it, I added a green unripe banana alternate. So rather than go with the purple aways right now, we'll see plenty of that. I want to go with the unripe banana in this in-state Georgia battle. First look at Georgia Tech and their entrance into the game, but also a first look and more importantly, a look at the Savannah Bananas college football team. Here we go in the unripe banana fits. I'd love it, man. Let's go have some fun in this rebuild. Defense already needs some help here as Georgia Tech's fighting in into the red zone. Second and goal to read option. No one was on Haynes King. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. They're up seven zip. Banana striked right back, tied this game up, and now you get a look at Peely and his offensive weapon out there, Split, who can't hear him on the audible, so we're just gonna run this one. Step up, 97 speed. Peely to the outside, getting around, skirting to the right. Oh man, you can tell he's got some burners. Making defenders look silly on the run. Let's see if he can lob it up to six foot eight target split, but that ball was extremely inaccurate and affected by the rain. That's terrible. A chance for redemption. Let's go ahead and give a one-on-one -on -one ball to split against the DB. Hauls it in six foot eight. Needed every inch of that banana frame, and he's got it. I can tell we're in for a fight. 21-14. Yellow Jackets are doing their best, but so are the Bananas. Not escaping that pressure. No siree. New drive. We're going to use James on a slip screen here, the five-foot target. Got swallowed up by all the big men in front of him. 
now we're forced to go back to the play action on second and 10 and dumped this could be another good time for a one-on-one -on -one ball before the safety got back there for support fourth and 18. this is not a gimme field goal by any means as it shanked left you blink and next thing you know it is a 38 21 point game that is unacceptable savannah banana wants to play a much better brand of football so let's go ahead and take up a deep shot six foot eight is gonna win that any day kind of a cheat code to have that out on the field but now we got the little guy breaking away number nine touchdown bananas down by 10 out of timeouts they're just gonna run it up the gut leading to a fourth but it's too late in fact they're going for it on fourth and three and we're calling a three two six defensive coverage wildcat touchdown that's a blunder how did we miss that assignment despite a loss here 45 to 35 we at least have some things to hope for, like a Trey split Heisman season. Of course, you already know his performance was good enough for Sunbelt Player of the Week. And heck, why not? In week one of this university's existence, go ahead and give him national player of the game. Surely gonna turn heads and prospective players and fans alike will notice. For someone with the recruiter archetype, we have little hours. I think that already means I'm making up my mind on firing the offense and defensive coordinator. Everyone's got a different archetype and I need synergy to make things happen here. Unfortunately for not the expert, his pandas fall 28 to seven. Healy of all people was quiet, but you already know Trey Split got his. We lost the battle so quick on gem middle linebacker, David Poe. He said, I'm going to LSU. With Poe leaving us, I need to keep my eyes out for battles like Dexter Wiegman here. I got to hard sell him and act quick because Kansas State, UTEP, already scheduling visits. This one's about to wrap up soon. I'm not holding my breath, but at the moment, somehow we're number one for Toby Coker. I guess he just wants to become a Savannah banana and make his dreams come true. And who knows, maybe dreams can come true for Peely and Split, this entire banana organization, if we can come to Georgia and get the win. I realize that is asking for a lot, but we got our faithful in yellow in their dedicated section. I mean, look at all the banana fans, even in the top row. And here they come. First look at the purple away. Everyone knows them for their famous yellow jerseys, but they can also put on a show with the purple too. I think the purple looks pretty clean and is a nice change of pace but they're gonna have to do a lot more than look clean if they really wanna beat Carson Beck in the Georgia Bulldogs. Second and 11, it's a quick out to their tight end. He is dropped. Now third and 10, let's hold it down here. Keep it in front, we cannot. Dogs are up 28-0. This is a bloodbath in this game and we need anything just to go our way at least once, maybe split. Realistically, it makes sense that we got blown out. We have backups in there now with Bowers delivering a ball to Ivy for first and goal. Sir Sponge already called off the dogs and brought in our second stringers. So maybe they can get a little pride score, do something the first stringers couldn't do. And it looks like they will go ahead and do it. Touchdown. Down 35, now to seven. We can get excited about a touchdown. Wave them goodbye. Wave them goodbye. We're headed home. That is hilarious. Waving Georgia fans out out of here as we get demolished 35 to 7 georgia bulldogs never in doubt it's a darn shame we were absolutely coasting in this competition for coker and now a deal breaker randomly strikes that'll definitely get you tilted but in the meantime let's go ahead and change it up on seth golden give him the hard sell at this point and definitely bring him in on a visit. If we can't get Toby Coker, we at least need to land Jermaine Pinckney or Tyreek Barnes, a four-star receiver, because our receiver split wants to go to the NFL and for some reason isn't thinking the bananas will help him. It's time to jump in and take in the all yellow uniforms, Peely, the bananas. We're here into the red zone, making a quick spin. Peely's gonna cut it up to the right. Another extra spin for emphasis all the way. That was icy so clean number one so clean let's go ahead and check out d peely once more on this run spin whoop and then i juke to the right another spin for emphasis break me a tackle and send him home fans didn't even have a moment to grab their concessions and settle into the game before d was out here looking like a maniac and now that we're here and can breathe take in the sights and sounds from banana split stadium defense inspired by d's play let's get a stop here on third and 20 not let a gash play happen touchdown georgia southern peely's thinking to himself ah oh, shoot here we go again i'm gonna have to do it myself instead that time defender fall was there to meet him we're gonna have to go across the middle reaching for it no good gonna settle for three points get the 10-7 lead haven't seen a whole lot of him because honestly our run game is a bit of a liability outside of the quarterback we got a five foot running back in james looking for anyone here underneath to split will do the trick juke to the right 
pushing it forward. Veer and Shu has a lot of crazy formations. They put split all the way at the sideline, essentially hoping for what one-on-one -on -one matchups to go his way. It is my first experience with the playbook and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the biggest of fan of it. Peely is going to step up and scramble, see if he can use the speed to get around the edge, put on a move, and get in there, big man. That is a Savannah Banana play if I've ever seen one. Game definitely going in our favor. Fourth and 28. They get a lot, but not enough. Third and one, we're going to run the speed option, flick it out to the running back. James is out of there. The five-foot speedster, does he have enough in the tank? He does. Third and six, we have split all alone should be an easy touchdown and it is busted coverage we take advantage bananas are gonna get their first victory at home and there we go first conference game in the sun belt we get the victory 38 to 15 bananas well on their way as we sway to the home crowd thank you everyone for coming out they just witnessed a great game from peely and james as they tag team for a massive day recruiting battle starting to intensify jermaine pinkney needs the hard sell and i think we need to get him in on a visit miami is taking the lead and we need to bring out the big gun so bring him to the game against old dominion and let's make it a family visit oh no the hard sell with seth golden didn't go well so you know what let's just remove it clearly we had better results sending the house so I hope that helps. All in all, I can't say recruiting's going very well. More losses than wins right now. It's official. We got locked out by Seth Golden. No point crying over what could have been. It's time to get back to work. Dexter Wiegman seems to be locked in. We should get him on this next wave. It's a big week for Jermaine Pinckney, and if all goes well on his visit, maybe we get back into the battle. And there we go. Our first Savannah Banana recruited to the program, Dexter Wiegman. I think it's official that we're going to lose Pinckney to Miami. Center Joseph Klein is our next commit. We have two big men joining the team. With good news comes bad news as well it seems like Tyreek just got washed out in the race all these big schools started scheduling visits getting higher up on his interest list as we fall down the list just like we fell to Lorenzo Ah. can't afford to stay down we're gonna go in on a couple more players another heartbreaking loss with Malik Lamb going to Clemson in the last second we had him to the very end Rob Simonson and Frederick look like we lost both of them seriously disappointing on that front just like a disappointing season here five and seven we dropped a lot of games that honestly we should have won like Texas State UConn, James Madison even. One score game in a lot of these, it could have been a different ball game, that's for sure. In fact, we could be competing for a Sun Belt Championship instead. What I'm doing is managing our staff and firing both offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator. Thanks for playing. The Savannah Bananas run a tight ship. Jalen Milrow will be seeing him on Sundays as he solidified himself with the Heisman Trophy. In the Sun Belt Conference, we have the worst class and worst class in the nation. I can't believe how slow the start is to our rebuild. For offense and defensive coordinators, there literally was no recruiting archetypes. So out of all these options, Stefan Witted is the best bet. I'm gonna go ahead and wait on offensive coordinator. Maybe someone else will join the fray. Only thing I'm liking on the offensive side of things is Brian Harris here a master motivator but also has the talent developer unlocked went ahead and gave him an offer competing with ball state let's hope it lands looks like we got both our targets not an ideal synergy moment but it was the best we could do for now end of year one recap michigan defends the title winning the natty in back-to-back -back seasons first team all sunbelt accolades trey split and jacoby henry whereas left end and right end get it done on second team bryce todman and kareem culliver clean up in the secondary not a bad year by any means from d peely but i want to see him take it up a notch in his final season which could prove difficult if we're losing his number one option in Trey split and that's exactly what's happening as four really solid juniors are all hitting the portal not Brock bread and of course headlined by Trey split here extremely low chance come on fingers crossed folks I seriously wonder what the probability is on an extremely low persuasion chance like what three percent oh for two Culliver maybe he can change our luck down to our final option bread all of them failed persuasion. We're keeping no one. With only two signees, thankfully, the transfer portal was full of guys that we could fill our board with. And we're sending points on more of them than we can shake a stick at. And when all said and done, the second best class in the Sun Belt, a lot of transfers leading the way. In fact, 15 three stars and half of them are transfers. Year two after training boosts up to an 80 overall, led by D. Peely, who's now an 86. Missing his main guy split, we bring in two guys from the transfer portal, Leacock and Smith, to top off the receiver room. At running back, we also brought in a couple guys like John Randall Jr. With the Georgia Roadshow out of the way last year, we now have a slate of non-conference guys like Memphis. 
Memphis, South Carolina, and Vandy. Hoping for better results, fingers crossed on this next batch of prospects. Do we have anyone that is of talent that wants to come here? And I don't think I see a single three-star. This is actually hands down the worst class I've ever seen in any dynasty mode. So Savannah Bananas year two, not one three stars interested, meaning we're gonna have to go rogue and pluck them out ourselves. Whether they know about us or not, we're gonna make a way. Like I said, I've never seen this before. It's almost like the rebuild is in nightmare mode. Of course, I'll also include some four stars and a couple five stars, but let's be real. I'm not a happy camper that I have to do this. There is no shot the Savannah Bananas are not bringing in any interest at the three star and up level. Not sure if this is the best strategy, but I'm targeting like six guys, all gems, two five star gems, and then like four four-star gems. I tossed in a three-star gem as well, but really I'm putting my money with 75 points on Dylan Handy, who has 92 throw power, 94 speed. This literally could be the next replacement to Peely. There's a very good chance this becomes a very bad idea and fast. I literally have no flexibility to put on any other prospect, but thankfully most of these battles are going fast as guys like Handy are already in their top five. We'll let the recruiting worry about itself as we have a date here with Memphis, 80 overall for both squads, 80 offense, 81 defense. Excited to see this squad full of transfers and senior players like our Peely here step up and have a good game. Let's make some play have some fun. It might take a week or two to develop some chemistry with new receivers as Smith is one of those guys taking off down the field. The other star transfer is Leacock. You see him on the right side of your screen there. He looks wide open on this play and we hit him and he breaks free for the touchdown. Number 85 from Peely. Now up seven to zero. Let's go ahead and give it up to AJ James. Little man got us to where we wanted to be. Now with the QB power, Peely tries to plunge. D is going to have to work a lot harder for his point and he'll go with the read option, just cutting it to the outside seat you later. I think you can say this senior is confident in his play. We'll see if his confidence continues to pay off. And man, this play is a cheat code in the video game. So maybe I should stop cheesing all over it banana style because we're splitting the defense, making them look like fools. Memphis has got to be careful in this one. They could get blown out if they're not paying attention on defense. Lethal on just a handful of plays so far. It's not taken a whole lot to get our team down the field. In fact, I have no questions whatsoever about the chemistry of the quarterback and the receivers, nor do I have any question about Peely and his grit when he's carrying the football. First and goal, we have an opportunity to just dump it to the five foot running back touchdown. Man, I can't help but feel bad for Memphis. They've gone through a lot and on that sack, that's the game. 42-13 bananas walk away with a no-brainer of a victory. It's going to be a banana frenzy on campus. Deservingly player of the week in the Sun Belt. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. Dylan Handy, four-star gem, going to play like a five-star. Let me introduce you to Peely's successor. You've heard about him because he plays a lot like him. He has 92 throw power, 94 speed with a few abilities coming on day one. A lot on the line for this next game. Four-star gem receiver is here. And I have a feeling if we win, we get him. If we lose, it's over. Mix in matching the unis to create an alternate fit. We have the unripe banana helmet, the green with the white pants and yellow jersey. Sir Sponge has been relying a lot on this man who's leading us forward this year. Five and one because of this man. We're trying to make it six and one with prospects visiting us. There is a lot on the line. Swerving to the left was originally thinking about going right until he puts on a move and picks it up himself. I'm not expecting that type of production in year one from our newest quarterback signee, but he has a great mentor here in Peely to learn from. Pressure on us again, going back and getting away from the defensive tackle. Amazing how this one is gonna work out. Unfortunately, got a little tired there at the end, fumbling it. Looks like our quarterback's human after all. Shaking it off, getting us right back down into the red zone, cutting it up the middle, get away speed, touchdown. This is do or die territory down by 10. It has to be right here right now for our first one and go ahead AJ with two minutes left this could be the drive of the game right here stepping foot on the banana maybe we'll get a sudden burst of inspiration calling up the play all go this one seems to work really well as you've seen in the past over the middle intercepted that was costly thankfully we still have our timeouts strap in for the final drive of the game it's necessary we step up and come alive oh Peely Opely. Talk about stepping up. That's exactly what we asked for, even with a quarterback spy on us. 
that's not what we asked for on the pick. Fumbling it, but he picks it back up. So looks like the banana sold it. And in that scenario, we're gonna sell probably the four-star prospect visiting. It's a Christmas miracle that we still held on to Koran Ragamba, the four-star gem receiver, still wants to be a banana at heart. And of course, I can't forget about our man, Glenn Abram, three-star gem lineman. End of year two this season went swimmingly, now invited to the Sun Belt Championship game against 18th ranked Golden Eagles. Tack on another four-star, and I'd say we're feeling pretty good going into this Sun Belt Championship game. It is an opportunity for revenge as Southern Miss came into our home stadium, beat us, and now we're in their home stadium for this one. Looking to start this game off with some fireworks. That will do English down the seam. After the first play, going back with the second one, another deep bomb, touchdown, bananas up. Smith, our top receiver from the portal. And if you couldn't tell from the first drive of the game, this one was headed our way all the way. Secured the first down and the upset victory, 18th ranked Southern Miss Falls. And that is a Sun Belt Championship in year two, so that could help our prospective guys coming in for the years to come. Cade Klubnick, senior quarterback from Clemson, in year two of the rebuild, gets the Heisman, which at the end of a productive campaign, now 23rd ranked, we get to take on the Northern Illinois Huskies in the Cure Bowl. Huskies were no match for the Bananas as we win this one. First team accolades for D. Peely. This could be a sneaky pick in the NFL draft. I guess our coordinators got sniped in are moving on to a new job. At least the computer finally brought in a recruiter for us so we can start stacking our bonus. Taking a look back at the 2025 college football playoffs, Michigan went for the three-peat but could not come through as Texas Tech out of the Big 12 got it done. Their path started with a victory over Wisconsin, then a beat down over Georgia, squeaked by USC before putting it to Michigan. End of year two roster management for the Bananas. We have three transfers this time. A couple of them have a good chance of persuasion. I don't want to lose John Randall after just bringing him in. And yes, he stays. CJ Smith as well. We just brought this guy in and he wants to get out. Oh, Sir Sponge got something up the sleeve. Brandon Worthington, make it three for three. All of our guys are staying. In the NFL, there he goes. D. Peely in the sixth round. Someone just got themselves ultra value. Low key, the next Lamar Jackson. I don't know what's going on, but after a bleak first year, this second year has been really good to us. A Sun Belt Championship and now essentially the whole transfer portal is open to coming. Look at the highlights here. The fourth best player in the class, Marcus Washington from Syracuse, is wanting to be a banana. And then let's go, man. The number one player in the transfer portal also wants to go bananas. He's coming in from number four, Clemson. 16 and six. I don't think I've ever had this good of an option in any of my dynasties either. Sorting by national rank. That's right, number one in the nation, state, and at his position. Gonna send him everything that I can. Absolutely. Absolutely the same thing for Marcus, Whit Weeks, Omar Graham Jr., Jeremy Calloway, Jamichael Pritchett, Caleb Bryant, Aaron Bryant, and so many more. Making quick work of the number one player in the transfer portal, Green is staying in Georgia and he's coming down to the banana land. Marcus Washington's just a great fit as well. Time to get to work, 3A motivation. Scheduling more visits for transfers, we are very intentional about bringing in. We're trying to lock them up and fast. Another big week with Marcus Washington, Omar Graham Jr. and Whit Weeks, three four stars signing the dotted line. Jamichael Pritchett tossing a three star too. That's crazy. We skyrocket on national signing day to the 21st best class. Pretty fitting for the team that finished 21st in the nation in the top 25 poll. Nine four stars with some immediate transfers that will impact the lineup right away. And then even high school players looking to make a huge splash. I am extremely surprised. And look at the number one signee, Green, who transferred over from Clemson. He's a 90 overall. Not just a 90 overall he's a star dude's gonna be a menace and so will 87 overall marcus washington 86 overall weeks and 84 overall omar i think this is before training results too so it's crazy to see we have immediate day one starters dylan handy here is our quarterback of the future even though he's classified as an athlete so let's go ahead and assign him to that quarterback position training results are in this team's up to an 85 overall it is skyrocketed year after year and in year three we're up like 10 11 points from when we first started. To keep things interesting in year three, this is gonna be the last season in the Sun Belt Conference. The Bananas have come into the league and have outgrown it. So we gotta prevent 
our bananas from getting too ripe and spoiling. And to do this, we'll keep them fresh by moving them to a Power 5 conference next season. Looking at the year three lineup, Dylan Handy is QB1, true freshman with star development. CJ Smith and Nathan Leacock, the transfers we brought in last season, are still one and two with some serious speed and overall. Excited to see Green and Burley in action. This team is low-key dangerous. High 80s across the board in the backfield. Could be a dark horse to get into the 12-team playoffs. This is another first I noticed in year three. We have the effect where we can jump out on so many recruits with an initial meter boost. I mean, just look at all the guys that have us ranked number one now. Looks like we're gonna need to jump in here really soon and see Dylan Handy in action. His first ever game, first ever collegiate start, player of the week. Oh my goodness, check it out. 56 to seven beat down. Consistently scored 14 points every quarter he cooked and topped it off with another 97 yards and a touchdown on the ground. And Marcus Washington, our transfer had an interception. That's it. We're going to need to get in there, but let's wait and see how they do when they take on Clemson. Taking on number three, Clemson Tigers. Let's mess around and find out. Here we go. One of the toughest places to play in college football. Clemson with their iconic entrance down the hill they come. Your two and one bananas have a test right here on their hand and look who's taking the kick return. It's true freshman gem receiver Rugamba and this team is full of transfers and freshmen like Leacock. Case in point number nine handy. Welcome to the Savannah bananas on a read option here. Wow, if we just got a block, that thing would have been out of here. Trying to do his best Peely impression. This is literally a replica of that guy. Should have handed it off on that one though. There will be a learning curve for the freshie, that's for sure, as I use her Omar. Weeks and Omar Graham up the middle here, two solid transfer players, and that almost was intercepted by the banana, but they get first and goal. Almost isn't good enough. We need to go the distance and stop this group. Second and goal up the middle, touchdown Tigers. Sustaining a little drive here, third down. It's a crucial play. We'll go to the end zone, touchdown Ivy from Handy. Beautiful ball. Ball, great placement ivy hauled it in all of a sudden handy has a chance here to give his team the lead which he does throwing a beautiful dime to tight end Handy having a heck of a day so far. Now he's got all this turf in front of him. Putting the spin move on, continuing the drive down the field in a juke. Oh man. Savannah Bananas recruit only the most electric players. Third and 18. Gonna need some help here. And we're decked for a sack. 48 yard field goal. You'd think this should be cash money, but in college here at a ruckus place like this and a less than ideal leg, it's no good. Defense gave us a chance to get back in it here. So we'll throw one up to Ivy. Oh yeah, lost in the sauce. Hanging in tough with Clemson. It is down to a big defensive stop. He's gonna get the interception. It's Odoms, what a play. Number 33, are you gonna get any distance back? Come on now, bananas came to play. Third and short, we got a guy across. It is Wysong. Now first in goal, speed option here. Let's go ahead and pitch it to the running back at the last second and almost in there. Insurance points right here will go a long way and Clemson defense holds. Rather than settle for my three, we're at the toughest place to play in the nation. Number one ranked here. I think we should go for it and try to end it now. And I think that will happen with a touchdown to Leacock, the senior leading the way. Or was that the junior? There's one of the transfers of the senior, one's a junior. This one might be the junior. Regardless, that's nerves of steel if I've ever seen it. And what the freshman quarterback needs to do here is get a first down, ice out Clemson once and for all. Third and one, Clemson stacking the box. We're gonna call for a read option. I'm gonna try to read it all the way. Perfect, handy, out of there. First down and should be game. Well, barring something crazy, we should be out of here soon. And hold on, there is a two minute warning in college football. Handy knows that, which is why he fought for the first down. Blood, sweat, tears. The freshman quarterback is a fighter in victory formation, ending this one against Clemson. Winning a game like this thrust us right into the college football playoff picture. Handy, I gotta hand it to you. 
you were the handyman today. With the great win comes some great prospects committing to Savannah. Unfortunately, we lost on five-star prospect Tuttle to Florida, but I can almost guarantee we got LaMichael Scruggs, a five-star receiver. Getting Scruggs is like reuniting Peely in Split, but now it's Handy in Scruggs. And what did I say? Jermaine Jackson, LaMichael Scruggs, huge class. As I expected, transfers plugged in and plan hard. Player of the week for Omar Graham Jr. Check off the list a second five-star right tackle tackle Amika Waletsko. Year three has treated Savannah even better. 10 and two ranked 14th in the nation, only lost to Georgia Tech and to Old Miss by three at their place. That gets us back into the Sunbelt Championship game where we can defend our title. As of right now, we're not in the bracket outlook, but if we win the Sunbelt Championship game, maybe it makes things clear. Dylan Handy was red hot until he got hurt. Amari Jones has had to fill in. What has really been a highlight is Whit Weeks in the year he's put in 10 sacks, two interceptions from the right outside linebacker position. Then you add the fact that Omar Graham, middle linebacker, picked off four balls and had three and a half sacks along with 76 tackles. Really proud of this defensive effort. If there was any doubt, it's gone now. Sunbelt champs are here. Was just giving him praise, but Whit Weeks was player of the week. Make it national player of the week. Fits pretty well for Whit Weeks. What you didn't see is Whit had three sacks to go with it, which is why he deserved the accolade. Congrats to senior receiver Chris Culliver out of North Carolina, 19 touchdown snags. Our guy won best linebacker of the year award. In even better, we got invited to play in the 12-team playoff against Michigan. Only in year three, recruiting has gone crazy over the last two years, especially in the transfer portal department, and that has led us right into the playoff game where the winner will take on Georgia Tech. <laughs> to keep it a buck, I think we're here a bit prematurely, which is why I'm wearing the unripe banana jerseys for this one. At our one-yard line, I forgot Handy is injured, so he will not play in this game. The team is good, but without our star quarterback, this is not going to be a game we win. Safety on the first drive. Looking to take our three points and get on the board. It's left. Our defense is playing really, really well as they've kept us in this game the entire way in Leacock right before the second quarter is over touchdown 85 okay now let's go hey you know what they say it's never over until it's over and we have a chance here to do the unthinkable upset michigan in their home i did not think in year three of the rebuild we would be at this point like i said we've had a lot of fortunate events pan out for us this is the last year we can play in the sun belt as we've shown we can dominate which should make the challenge a bit harder but at the same time give us better recruits because the best guys want to play at the best places so power five recruits should make a load of a difference but the Savannah Banana team is already making a difference. With or without power conference contributors, this is inspiring work here before half. Who do we think we are coming into Michigan and playing like this? Wolverines have had a chance to respond, and here we go. Defense. Monster sack for Caleb Cormier. QB power right up the middle. Ballsy call, and he got it. First and goal at the two. It's a play action, and off the Michigan helmet. We were inches away from scoring and taking the lead with two minutes to go. It turned into a pick six. We just selected a play called shock. And yeah, that's fitting because we are shocked out here that this even happened. So let's dump it to Ragumba, the four-star gem, who is actually a five-star talent. Definitely going to be feeding him the ball more because he is the future at wide receiver for the Bananas. And as a freshman, he's doing a great job keeping composure and getting down the field. Fourth and one, down by eight. This is the game on the line. We got it off, and it dropped. With 34 seconds left, you never know. Miracles can still happen, so why not let it fly to Smith, who brings it in? The dream is still alive. Second and goal. Scrambling, searching, anyone. There he is. Got it off. It's Ragumpa. Oh my goodness. It's mayhem out here. Freshman receiver is nails. Not to get y'all excited, but the worst part is we didn't get the two-point conversion, so we lose the game. We gave Michigan a run for their money. Give us one to two years, I think we'll be here to win it all. With that sombering note, we'll turn our attention to early national signing day, the 20th best class. If we were going to lose, at least my Kansas State Wildcats pulled it off. It's great to see them victorious in the 2026 national championship. Stuff Island Green, our defensive tackle, wants to go pro. Projected round two, we have a high persuasion chance of keeping him. Please let him stay. Please let him stay. 
Yes, I need another year of that man. We did lose Marcus Washington to the NFL draft and congrats to him, round six selection. I feel like I broke the game. Once again, I've never seen a spectacle quite like this. How do I get all the transfer portal options in front of me? So now I get a pick from the best of the best to bolster my team. Guys like Quinn and Ford wanna be a Savannah banana. And I told you in the beginning that this group, this brand alone attracts talent from all across the nation. Dedicating my recruiting hours to all all the transfers I just put on my board, we should be in for a haul. Better and better they get. Eighth best signing class in the nation. This one is just loaded from top to bottom with five stars, plenty of four stars and three stars. 13 four stars, 16 three stars. Yeah, I think this team's set to go on a big run. Not only is Green a 95 overall DT, he's also a team player willing to go to a position of need. 93 overall at the right end position. Slots in like a glove. And that also helps a ton because it's loaded at the DT position. Training results are in. It's 87 across the board. This team is getting nasty. As we talked about, it's promotion time to a Power 5 conference, and I'm thinking prime time and the defending national champs, my alma mater, are a good landing spot. Texas Tech even won a national championship a couple years back in the sim. So yeah, that confirms it. The Big 12 is getting even tougher. As soon as we move to a Power 4 conference, the recruiting board just got a lot sweeter. Still a good amount of two stars, but I don't feel overwhelmed by the one and twos. Bananas are moving up in the world and there are a lot of people that want to play for us. Most of the five stars don't even have deal breakers anymore on us so we can go ahead and add a few of the best to our board. At this point in the rebuild there's a good chance we can land some of them. Add another milestone for the Bananas their first insta commit Adonis Harmon wanted all of that. First year in the big 12 for number 10 Savannah Bananas starts off against Colorado at Folsom Field. Then we get a few light non-conference games before we get into the grueling big 12. Or I guess I could say it can be grueling. Definitely not going to sleep on power for competition, but we're already up to an 89. This is one of the best screens you can see in a rebuild. Interest number one, all the way down the list for 18 prospects. I think I found one of my favorite recruits so far in the rebuild, Juan Cone. Four-star gem right tackle. Nothing extremely crazy off the stat sheet. I just think the name Juan Cone is pretty comedic. And I know I've seen a ton of funny names on Twitter. So if you've had some fun recruits, let me know down in the comment section. On the topic, of recruits. Let's look at the recent class that we brought in and see what dev trait they are. Five-star Amika is an impact 80 overall off the rip. The other five-star LaMichael Scruggs, elite receiver, 80 overall, six foot six. What a beast. Jermaine Jackson, impact. Dion Hill, impact end. Cornell, impact. David Garcon, only a normal dev, so that stinks. But all he has to do is back up Dylan Handy, who's already up to an 86 overall sophomore season. Rodney Mayo with the impact. And I think you get the idea. Between all of our freshmen and redshirt freshmen, there's a lot of high 70s, 80 overall players. Even a 91 overall sophomore. What I'm trying to say is, yes, we have some great upperclassmen transfers, but we also have amazing underclassmen. So this is going to be the bunch that wins a national championship either this year or next year is my bet. I'll place my bet on next year because we should be past the 90 threshold by then. For now, I'll jump in and take on the buffs. There goes Ralphie. As primetime looks to start off the season with his bunch, hopeful they can make a run for the playoffs. No Shooter Sanders, he's been in the NFL for a couple seasons now, so it's up to this group of Buffaloes. Hopefully they've been recruiting well because Sir Sponge definitely has. Here is senior John Randall Jr. One of our first ever transfer commits. We got him to stay when he was thinking about leaving, and I'm glad we got him. He is a star for sure. Ooh. And our first pass is intercepted by the linebacker. That's a pick six for the buffs. That's not the start we thought was going to happen. Getting deflected while we threw it is not going to ruin our day any more than we need it to. Huge sack. Let's get the ball back. We'll go ahead and put Ankara on a Texas route. It gets open and he's got it. His first collegiate touchdown. Second half football, CU wants to get into the end zone and get the lead. But I think our defense has other ideas today as they're trying to clamp down psych well i'll be darned we're down by 12 first and goal qb power i ran right into the dt of all the routes i could have took that probably was not it as he sheds through again wow they're making me work for this one thankfully we cash in fourth and one we have him streaking all the way across why song less than a minute to go in this game we need points and bad that underthrown ball gets intercepted see who's gonna walk away 
with a win in week one. I guess I can't be sleeping on the Big 12. Buff's pretty pumped up about that. We made a couple mistakes and that was all she wrote. Through four weeks, it's a little rocky two and two for the team, but two amazing signees, a four-star gem and a five-star receiver, the fourth best player in the nation, another 6-6 six, six threat. They just keep flowing in. Another five-star, the best quarterback in the nation. Why don't we go ahead and tack on the best DT as well? Started out the gate stumbling in the Big 12, losing to CU, and then losing to Temple. What in the world is that? Then we got hot, pulling a big one off UAB, East Carolina, both ranked teams this year. Arizona State and Cincinnati felt the wrath, barely losing to ranked West Virginia, before coming down the stretch strong with four straight wins. With three losses, we're still number three in the nation. And before the championship slash play, off run i thought we could check out the big 12 logo and update on the field in a regular season game wow okay and we'll start it off with the fumble kick return got stripped so we're immediately in danger on the opening drive second and 12 receiver in motion they don't go to him they go to the running back he's stuffed anyway dropping into coverage ben shaw looking for anyone and the quarterback slid down taking his three points despite oh nope no three points. I was going to say three points. I'll take it. That's a win, despite how horrible it was to open this game off with a fumble. First and 10 over the middle. Who left Springs this wide open? That should be a crime. Now I'm going to keep my eyes open for Springs into the end zone. Yep, he's got a step, and he's got himself six. This has got to be the fastest ascent from a group of five to a power four conference. I mean, look at the stadium, too. It's packed out. Everyone's here. Sold out crowd. That is the power of Savannah Banana. Gave up the touchdown. Unfortunate, we're now falling behind. But for all of our fans, we won't give up that easily. Let's take a bomb and get right back into this thing. Leacock with ease, strutting his stuff at the one. Always got a home run hitter on this team. That's a guarantee as handy hands it in. Second half football just past midfield. We'll take it to John Randall Jr. First and goal, it's a handoff. He's got space, he's got to move. He's in there, or I should say now he's in there all the way, touchdown. This is a team in the college football playoffs I wouldn't want to face personally. They look rough and tough, and that is a blown coverage right there. So Arizona's getting back in it. All of their effort could go in vain here as long as we get one first down, and well, there it is. Let's let John Randall Jr. finish this one off, hitting the outside and cutting up field. Well, before I could say it's finished off, it is third and 10. We need a first down. We got it. Dropped it. Almost had it. Now we're going to go for a 52-yard field goal. Yeah, right. I'm calling a timeout. I know our kicker better than anyone, and I know he's not hitting that thing. So I'd rather go for it right here and make a play, which Y Song does for us, surprisingly. That was a bad idea thrown into double coverage, but it paid off in the end, and we can walk away victorious. 28-23, Bananas defend the home turf, send all the fans home happy. We're gonna go dancing here very soon. A battle for the ages on deck, number five, Kansas State versus number two, Savannah Bananas. It's all for the Big 12 championship title. Will the new kid on the block take it, or will the tried and true Wildcats get another title to add to their trophy case? as they did just win the national championship last year. This should be a great game, and I'm excited to see the Bananas play. Opening kickoff at the big game before the big slate of playoff games. This is what it's all about. Rebuild Savannah Bananas on the fast track. Opening drive for us on offense here. Randall's gonna hit that hole and get the first. This is extra sweet for John Randall Jr. He is from Kansas after all. We'll keep that in mind as we go throughout the game, but right now the pressure is immense. Forcing us back to a third and 14. This could be a dog fight until we missed Y Song. That was good pursuit to catch back up to that. Third and one handing off to John Randall who hits a spin and stayed up. Let's go ahead and cash in the first points of this championship game. Okay, maybe now we'll get a better chance as Cypress gets right past the DB into the end zone. Big touchdown, Bananas. Third and 14, looking to hold here. The pressure gets through. It's Green, the third sack of the day already. Dude is seriously a menace on the defensive line. Green, ever since we got him from the transfer portal, the number one transfer prospect. This team has turned around in a massive, massive way. His class has ushered in the new era of banana football, and it has been so much fun. Getting Scruggs out there for a snap or two. Why don't I go to him? 
that's probably why I don't go to them. Still trying to learn a lesson about forcing the ball. When we spread the love, we move down the field and cash in for points. K-State up by two, championship title and aspirations right here. Need a stop, we get it. Fourth and one, they're taking it down to the final second and going for the pass. They dump it out to the running back and he converts. That could be game. And unfortunately, it is game. K-State knocks us off. Forced to battle it out in the first week of playoffs against the Georgia Bulldogs. In the battle for Georgia, the dogs came and embarrassed us on our own turf. They're beating us right now by 17. Feels like no matter what I do at the moment, they should be able to walk away with a dub. Super promising season out here. Gonna end in shambles, a deflection pick. That'll do it. Georgia is ran through the Bulldogs. We made it close and interesting, but as the clock expires, no matter what happens on this play, even a beautiful catch won't save us now. Bulldogs walk in here and keep their dreams alive, and our dreams are now gonna have to go to year five. And guess who went and won it all? That's right, Georgia Bulldogs. A couple second team All-Americans making the list, Green and Burley. John Randall was a first team Big 12 running back, while Michael Scruggs was a first team Big 12 freshman. No one leaving us this year, and that's for good reason. The Bananas are a serious contender year in, year out. We'll lose Green to the first round in the NFL. Huge shout out to that man for turning this program around, and he's gonna go wreck havoc in the NFL. John Randall Jr., fourth round pick, Lee Collins, fifth round in Burley a fifth round not gonna go as crazy in the transfer portal we'll grab some guys some of the best for sure but we have a ton of underclassmen ready to start let's take Brett Wentz Matt Fior Hashim Emmanuel Chosen Caleb Harris Caden Williams Jay Crawford and William Sanders from here we have a ton of recruiting hours let's just send them the house and contact friends and family lined them up and knocked them all down literally grabbed everyone from our list let me introduce to you the second best signing class in all of the nation just behind Oklahoma. I would beg to differ that our class is better than Oklahoma because we were strategic hitting up so many gem players in this class as well. Whereas I don't know if Oklahoma got this many guys with that green luscious gem. Training results going into year five are here and it's 90 overall across the board. That's it. Put the league on notice. We have a ton of 90s and high 80s. The Savannah Bananas are taking the title. Mark my words. A look at the schedule of destiny. A couple non-conference games against OK opponents before taking on the Big 12. Only one player on the preseason first team Big 12 watch list. A couple here on the second team, but man, they really are sleeping on the Savannah Bananas who are about to win a chip. Before we make the run, let's look at the freshmen we just brought in, like Chauncey Aller's impact. Eric Lemur is a star 80 overall middle linebacker with 91 speed. Pat Warmack, number one rated quarterback in the nation, a star player. Marcus Kelly, top dog, star as well. Mike Cash, number one rated DT, is a star. Dewan Ignew is up there as well. You get the point. The rebuild is just about complete. Looks like I severely underpredicted how unforgiving the Big 12 would be. We won five straight before losing the next three and overall finishing up just not good enough. Looks like we had to rely on true freshman Warmack for most of the season because when Handy was healthy, he was really good. Cormier went out and put up a 16 and a half sack season. That's unheard of. And in this year's edition, 2028 College Football National Champions, the Kansas State Wildcats take it again. We went eight and five and now our team is down just a smidge, but 89 offense, 87 defense. With potential for a late season overall boost, we should be in the driver's seat again. But we know how well that went when I said that last year. Dude, what is going on? Bananas are 14th ranked, nine and three. Why did we just fall short again? The Big 12 is getting extremely tough. Only good enough for the Pop-Tarts Bowl against Auburn this year. 10 and three, a really good year, but my prediction's off. We haven't been able to get into the playoffs. Our team and the recruits we brought in are absolutely stacked with talent. This has to be it, man. At 87 overall, I think the roster even looks better than that. A grueling schedule nonetheless. It's gonna be a hard road through the Big 12. All it took was a little bit of patience, Savannah fans, and we have a Arrived. About time too. let's take on Oregon and the winner of that game gets to play UAB. Can I just take a minute and say that the Big 12 is overtaking football as the best conference. We got Kansas State, Colorado, Baylor, and Savannah all up in this playoffs. Absolutely insane how at 9-3 and three we're fourth ranked in the nation and we're not even in the championship game. CU versus Baylor. That's cool with me because I already knew I had a spot. Let's check out the team that got us here. Handy had a great year. 3,200 yards, 37 touchdowns. Added six on the ground whereas running back Christian to boy with 11. Scruggs and Rugamba clearly two superstars, whereas sophomore standout Bernard Traor had five interceptions. No longer awaiting UAB, it looks like Baylor.
Baylor is the team that will play if we win. UAB jumped to the other side to face Kansas State. Got a good mix of usual suspects plus a few fun ones. The Ducks had the audacity to march right into our home and try to beat us at our own turf. Down by four, we need to run down this field and get that lead already. Taking a deep shot. Is that Scruggs? It is, and he dropped it. Andy is gonna have to think outside the box. A dot behind Scruggs. Bro, that was house call written all over it. You got me sleep, man. So on third and 10, we're just gonna hand it off up the middle. Was hoping for a little more than five yards, but we'll take it here, fourth and five. I think he's open again. Does he have it this time? Third time's a charm. Unbelievable that it took us that many tries. Let's go underneath the Toncho. Who steps it in? Touchdown, we have the lead. Up by three, game is really on the line right here. They need a big play, and our DB made a bigger one. Now all tied up with two minutes to work. Work. Let's go down and win ourselves a game. We deserve it for the rebuild that we've been having as a Savannah Banana franchise. We cannot forget the mission, why we started. We want to give college students the best experience possible and it begins with a national championship. We can make all Savannah Banana dreams come true with a big game and run in this playoff. Oregon starting to call timeouts. They know where we are. It's field goal range, but I don't trust our kicker that well. With the way it works now, it's no sure thing that you'll go ahead and get it as handy. I gotta hand it to you, man. Thank you, offensive line. I literally just saw the whole season flash before my eyes when he fumbled that thing. That was ridiculous. Is this a bad idea? I'm going for it on fourth and two. Hopefully we live to tell the tale, keeping it. He's got a lane, he got it. He fought for it, first down. You might be asking why the heck did I just do that? I didn't wanna give Oregon any chance with the ball in their hands. And why not get more yards, get closer for the surefire field goal? Don't want any question marks at all from this game. I want it to be a sure thing. 26 yards. I repeat, 26 yards. It's not exactly centered, but that's okay. It's a very slow meter. I repeat, not much wind. Pretty surefire thing. Get in there. That's game. Your bananas are advancing to the next round. It's a party in Savannah. No, literally, we're doing everything and all things in the stands. Number five, Savannah versus number three, Baylor. We have a better team, and we have faced these guys in the Big 12, so it's essentially a conference game. No longer at our home stadium or on the road. It's a neutral site, and we're playing for a trophy. Baylor's amped up. They've been waiting for a moment like this. Their school needs a moment like this, especially given the sorry state in real life that they are in right now but the bananas also need a moment like this up by 11 points with a minute 50 to go i say we just go ahead and end it right here handy taking off diving that's effectively got baylor all out of timeouts and now we can just take a one-on-one -on -one shot to scruggs i saw him line up there and thought he could win it doesn't hurt to try and hit this but yeah not even close with the leg bananas got it done in a big way it was a conference matchup we had their number we've had their number ever since joining the big 12. looking at the bracket around the league kansas state's going to be taking on washington while we take on the gators cotton bowl it's a big one here against the gators third down fighting for the first fourth and inches that is oh so close we're definitely going it and sending it right back up the middle this time we get it handy and the bananas looking for more points and he's gonna scramble. He has a couple options. He might just take it himself. In his senior season, Handy's worked himself up to a 97 overall speed quarterback. That's literally just like Peely. I feel like he's honestly a carbon copy just with a different number. So that's pretty sweet to have another one of those. Ignu brought us right to the one. Let's finish it with a touchdown. Looks like that touchdown's gonna have to come through the air. So it's third and goal. Back to Ignu. He got us here. Finish us off, big man. Gators feeling the pressure early. It's only the second quarter and they're going for it on fourth and two up the middle. I guess no one was there to make a stop. Gonna bring Scruggs in a little bit here. That's uncharacteristic of this Veer option offense. But hey, first in goal. I don't know what to do with it. So Handy's gonna scroll left and just hop on in. He's got a dangerous set of skills. And you can tell the Gators are far from the swamp. There's no saving them in this one at all. Touchdown. Savannah Bananas. Bananas hold on, 42-21. We got the finale 
right around the corner. The national championship game trophy, it's all on the line. Guess who? Kansas State is back, looking to defend their title. This would be their third natty in this entire rebuild. We cannot let that happen. Bring on the boys with the unripe banana jerseys because that's exactly how K-State's gonna play. They're unripe, unready for us. Handy looking to start off the game with a shot. It's a little to no pressure at all. We're gonna step up and just run. Third and five. Let's see if anyone springs open. The pressure got to us. And our opening drive is a three and out. Not the start we needed. Cats got the ball back and this team is deadly on offense. Got another chance on offense here. We have some time. Let's step into it and make a play. Not looking good, Handy. Has a case of the national championship jitters, I suppose. And yeah, this is gonna turn into a nightmare here any second. What's this? Warmack stepping into the game. Handy had to go to the blue tent and was getting knocked up a bit by the K-State Wildcats. Maybe we got the right guy after all to step in. Pat Warmack has a star underneath his name for a reason. He was number one in his class a couple years back. And that is obviously for a reason because he can whip that ball around any day of the week. I gotta give a big hand to Handy. Handy. He's done a lot for this group, and now it's in Warmax domain to win it. Bummed we could not connect on that last one, and now a strip sack fumble by the K-State defense gives them the lead. Talk about an unfortunate series of events. Looking for better luck on the deep lob. Rugamba has it. Beautiful float to that ball. Textbook. And now we got a wide open touchdown to Ignu, who goes crazy with it. A battle through and through. This is insane how close it's getting, and our kicker shanked it. To be honest, I don't even know if he's hit one field goal this entire episode. Oh, well, that's beside the point, I guess. We need to go score a touchdown. Got the receivers bunched up to our right. Let's go ahead and send them on some streaks. Maybe one will break free, just like Rugamba did. Touchdown, bananas. Three minutes to go, up by five. Warmack is the man. We just needed a war banana in our system, after all, and we can go ahead and try to wrap this one up. War Mac macked down on a couple bananas before this game. He needed the extra potassium to get the boost for the final frontier. Number 22, Du Bois. That's my boy right there with a the big run. Let's go ahead and feed him again. He really is a hungry man. Should be chewing clock right now. I'm not really sure why I'm not. Doesn't matter in this case. Babers takes this one into the goal area. Now chew clock on, coming out of the two minute warning. Let's hand it off and chew some more clock or just go ahead and score, why not? If a lane opens up for Du Bois, he's gonna go and take it. Kansas State got a touchdown. Now they're going for the onside kick. It's a good one, but not good enough. We pick it up and we're gonna go ahead and get possession. By no means is this thing over. We have to get them to burn all their timeouts and get a first down while we're at it. That is not easy with a national championship on the line. Cutting it up, he's got some space. He's fighting ahead and he did it. And the Savannah Bananas are victorious. Handy, salute to you. But this game was won by Warmack, and we are national champions. Just soak it in. Oh, man, the rebuild is complete. Savannah has arrived, knocking off the defending champs. They've done it so many times, too many times, if you ask me. There's Warmack, just absolutely shocked. That face said it all as Sir Sponge with his yellow polo, soaking it up out there, holding up that trophy. And as we look back on the victory, I hope you all soaked it up and enjoyed this rebuild of the Savannah Bananas. I enjoyed creating it and bringing it to y'all. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and keep it here for all things College Football 25.